One of the things that he's so fond of is Transformers. And we can see in Transformers as to how Transformers talk, how they transform into a car. So these ideas are essentially born out of his head saying, Papa, he, a Transformer can follow, can do whatever he can. Why can't this robot of yours do it? You have kids coming into your research lab. When kids come in, we normally tend to show them almost every piece of technology that we've built in. We just let them free to essentially say, what do you really think? What do you want to increase? And some of the answers have been absolutely incredible. I think education can really leapfrog when you essentially have these toys which are talking back to a kid, understanding what does he feel, maybe making a space available for him where he can talk and learn stories. I think there are credible examples in the world, Alexa for example, Google Home. If you use the data that you've collected via AI on this toy, how do we know that this is not going to be abused? And I think that's where laws are required as to what is that organization doing with that data, whether they're utilizing it for some other means, unscrupulous means, whether it's being picked up in, internally, whether it's secure, whether you're not picking up and talking to a uh, child about private information, you know, what does your parent do, etc. When a child uses a word like, can I kill a fox, the AI should respond back, it's a bad word that you're using, you, know? you should not use these words. So maybe it's point to dumb down the AI a little bit and say that we will only do this. And I think those limitations can only come in when you've got some laws and guiding principles and facets, saying that these are toys, so they should have some guiding principle. But I think what is important from a parent's point of view is doing a little bit of research yourself about what that organization is that is making that toy, what kind of a toy it is, can you talk to it, can you really test it.